The Chinese regime is trying to destroy religion, but one online magazine is exposing what's happening. But getting these stories out of China can be deadly. Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. The officially atheist Chinese Communist Party has launched an unprecedented war on religion. But to get away with it, the party needs to move in secret. And that's what makes Bitter Winter a thorn in Beijing's side. For over a year, the online magazine has been getting exclusive stories and video out of China, shining a light on what the Communist Party tries to keep in the dark. But the battle has not been fought without a cost. Shelley Zhang went to Milan to sit down with Marco Respinti, the director in charge of Bitter Winter. Mr. Respinti, thank you for joining us in this park in Milan. Thank you. So your magazine last November published a groundbreaking video of what the Chinese Communist Party calls the vocational uh, schools in Xinjiang for the Uyghur Muslims. Uh, we're going to play a little clip from the video now. Could you tell us why this video is so important? Yes, we know for sure that Xinjiang is full of uh, detention camps that they and the CCP is calling like something like training school or vocational school, professional schools. Uh, we know for sure again that uh, they are there. There are proofs, there are um, evidences uh, of that. Uh, for the first time, Bitter Winter was able to release some footage from within one of those uh, detention camps. Uh, and this is something very peculiar, something very unique. Uh, and in fact, it was a very successful uh, video. This documents, uh, without any doubt, that the CCP is lying when it says that those camps are school for supposedly professionals. They are, as you can see from the footage, they are indeed prisons, detention camps, uh, detention places, uh, jails. They are um, devised for detaining unlawfully people, and unlawfully because they, they had no trial, they had no, uh, in many cases, they had no official uh, charges. So uh, one of, uh, of the, of the reasons why this video is so important is that it shows people what uh, the so-called schools are. Uh, they are lies and they are jails. So has the Chinese Communist Party responded to the release of that video? Well, they didn't respond directly because it's quite impossible to respond directly. Uh, otherwise, uh, other than saying that this is a fake thing, but you can demonstrate that it's a real footage. They, they did it uh, indirectly. Uh, and they, um, this is a, a common policy of the CCP. They did it indirectly in two ways. First of all, in the, uh, in the beginning, they denied that they had any camps. And then when we, we and other people published uh, articles, uh, researches, and then the video, they said, yes, this is, uh, this is a school again. Uh, the third um, way of, of trying to, to, to respond to that is silence. Uh, which is very revealing. They are not dealing directly with, uh, with uh, things like our video, and this is, is, uh, tells a lot of uh, what, what is the truth. So that video showed a so-called vocational training center, which is for adults uh, to go to, but um, your organization also released a video about what happens to children in Xinjiang. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. One of the, of the, dramatic, uh, uh, the dramatic part of this tragedy is then when adults are put into jail detention camps, uh, they are put uh, in, in families, like, uh, you know, mother, father, uncles, aunts, grandmother, grandfather. They, they try to, to erase the whole family. What remains after that many times are children, underage, children that are left to, 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 to no one. Uh, so the CCP manages to take care also of them and there are special structure, uh, special camps, special vocational camps for, for children. Uh, and this is a very clever move um, uh, that the CCP makes because he understands the importance of education and, and they try to indoctrinate to, uh, to the communist ideology uh, these young uh, children, starting from a very 
uh, young age and putting in jail or in detention camps their families, their relatives, uh, easy uh, for them the way to, to ease for them the way to, to, to indoctrinate them because they take care completely of them. We know and we published uh, video, we released the video um, that there are special structures also, also for children. So essentially they are creating orphans by taking away their family members and then putting them in places where they're educated or, or brainwashed by the state. Yes, of course. Uh, we published many articles uh, just saying that one of the policies of the CCP is destroying families because they can divide people and rule upon them uh, much more easily in this way. How is Bitter Winter able to get videos like the ones that you talked about out of China? One of the unique uh, features or the peculiarity of Bitter Winter is uh, that of having many correspondents and journalists in China. Uh, of course, they work undercover, they work at the risk of their own lives, and sometimes this risk is very high, but this is the only way to, first of all, to get uh, real stuff out of China, to have the truth, and to, to, to publish reliable things. Of course, there is a long process uh, through which we verify what we get from in, inside China, but this peculiarity makes uh, Bitter Winter unique. Um, the risk that these journalists or correspondents take on themselves uh, put them in real danger. In uh, more or less um, six months, 45 of them last year have been arrested. Uh, half of them, more or less half of them, have been released after that, but the second half uh, just disappeared. We know nothing on them. And the guy who published the video on the Yugos from the, the, det the detention camps, uh, inside the detention camps, was one of them. Uh, um, in fact, we published his video uh, after he, he was being already arrested and we didn't know. So we published the video and he was already in jail. Um, he is one of the, the people who, about whom we know nothing. He disappeared. Mm -hmm. So, he, do you know if he was arrested for filming that video? We are not sure, we don't have any proof, but we suspect that. Uh, we know for sure, and we published um, documents from within the CCP mentioning, namely, Bitter Winter, and uh, pointing at Bitter Winter as an enemy, as a danger for the state, for the CCP, for the regime. So we are sure that if they know that people uh, work with us, uh, they, they go after them. So from what you said, they really are risking their lives to, to report some of these things and take them out of China. Why do they do that? Totally, they do the, risk their lives. Uh, I think they do that for an easy reason. Uh, not doing that will be worse. Uh, they, they, they think that helping Bitter Winter speaking the truth all over the world will in some way or another help their cause and their cause is uh, freedom and respect for human uh, rights and human liberty and uh, for religious freedom. Um, once we, uh, our correspondents were arrested, as I said, half of them have been released and we were thinking of, of maybe stopping what we were doing because that will, uh, would put people in danger. When those uh, people that were arrested and then liberated knew that, they, they told us, no, please, don't stop. We will keep on. We will continue. Uh, this is very rewarding. And, and, and they are doing it. They are still uh, reporting. Tell us a little bit about why Bitter Winter was founded. Why focus on religious, you know, persecution in China. Yeah, uh, one of the other peculiarities of Bitter Winter is, is that it is a, a kind of a regional combination between professional journalists, activists for human rights, refugees, exiles from, from China, escaping in the West and other countries, and academic scholars. Um, the editor, I am the director in charge, the editor of Bitter Winter and to some, some extent, the founder is Professor Massimo Introvigne, a very well-known scholar uh, worldwide of 
of religion. I mean, he, he's a scholar of new religious movement and religion. He got interested in the study of religion in China, and very soon he realized that it is not possible to study religion in China academically only without taking care or at least paying attention to the problem of religious freedom. So he got the idea that studying religion, we need to do something to address the topic of religious uh, persecution, religious freedom. So he managed, and that took months, we, he managed to put together, together different uh, people. He was an academic, he needed you know, some activists, he needed some journalists to do the real work. So we put together this very unique combination of people and that's Bitter Winter. And uh, in just over a year and a half, you've already come to the notice of the Chinese Communist Party, as you said. Yeah, yes, yes. This, is, uh, this means that we are doing the right thing. And uh, I'm not taking the merit of that. Uh, we, we Westerners are not taking the merit of that. Uh, the merit goes to those people that I just mentioned. They, were, they are in China. They risk every day of their lives. They risk every day their job, their family, uh, and their health. And, but they keep on and they deserve all the credit to do that. Uh, without that, without them, Bitter Winter is nothing, would be nothing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Join us next week for part two, where Marco Respinti talks about how the Communist Party puts religions in three categories, black market, gray market, and red market, and then uses those to undermine people's beliefs. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.